Good day, and welcome to the UFC 154 St. Pierre versus Condit conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, for op opening remarks and introductions, I would like to turn the conference over to Mr. Schaller. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks, Candace. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the UFC 154 media conference call. UFC 154 takes place on Saturday, November 17th from the Bell Center in Montreal, and it's headlined by the welterweight title fight between GSP and interim champion Carlos Condit. There are still a limited number of tickets available for the welterweight title showdown at the Bell Center box office and online at eventco.ca. In the U.S., UFC 154 is available live on pay-per-view at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, with the prelims airing on FX Live at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. For our friends in Canada, fans can catch the prelims from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on Sportsnet and TVA Sports, and of course, the pay-per-view is live at 10 p.m. Eastern. Before we get to today's call, I want to remind everybody about UFC Primetime, which follows GSP and Condit in the lead-up to their fight. It airs immediately following The Ultimate Fighter this Friday on FX. So we got The Ultimate Fighter at 10, immediately followed by Primetime at 11. Today we're joined on the call by GSP, Condit, UFC President Dana White, and UFC Director of Canadian Operations, Tom Wright. At this time, I'll turn it over to Dana. Dana? Good morning, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to call in. Who has the first question? Okay, yes, let's you, go ahead. if you'd like to ask a question, please signal by pressing the star key followed by the digit one on your telephone keypad. If you are using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. If you have signaled for a question prior to hearing these instructions on today's call, please repeat the process now by pressing star 1 again to ensure our equipment has captured your signal. We'll pause for just a moment to allow everyone an opportunity to signal for questions. And we'll take our first question from Rick Wright, the Albuquerque Journal. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Dan, uh, this may be a hard question to answer, but but uh, where is where does this main event rank in your mind uh, as as far as uh, the history of, of UFC? I don't know about as, uh, as far as the history of the UFC, but th this is a huge fight. I mean, if you look at George St. Pierre, he's been out for over a year, one of the most, the most dominant champion, you know, ever in, in that weight division. And uh, I've said it many times, and I'll say it again, the biggest pay-per-view star in, in the UFC. <clears throat> um, then you've got Carlos Condit, who I really believe a lot of people aren't giving this kid enough credit. Uh He's tough, man. This kid can fight. He's got great ground skills. He's got knockout power. And normally, if you look at the way fights are done in boxing, when a champion of, of uh, uh, GSP's caliber comes back, you usually give him a, an easy fight. This is far from an easy fight for George St. Pierre. This is a very tough fight. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And we'll take our next question from Mac. Ingle with Fort Worth Star Telegram. Uh, this is a question for Carlos. Uh, Carlos, do you feel like a, a pretty big underdog going into this fight? And if you do, then how do you get around the mindset, or do you think it's an advantage that George hasn't fought in more than a year? Um, yeah, I do feel like an underdog. Um, you know, in, in most fights I, I'm going into, I I put myself in that mindset. Um, you know, as far as George being out, um, you know, I really don't, I, I don't see it being uh, that big of a factor. You know, I, I know that George's recovery is, uh, you know, from, from from all reports from his camp, you know, he's, he's better than ever. And, uh, you know, that, that's what I'm expecting. Thank you. And we'll take our next question from Nancy Audit with TVA Sports. Oui, une question en français pour uh, Georges Saint-Pierre. Georges, euh, quel sera le plus grand défi pour toi euh, ce soir-là dans l'octogone contre Carlos Condit? Ça va être de, de gagner, de gagner mon, mon combat. Euh, en fait, euh, tant que ça fait tellement longtemps que tu n'as pas, pas compétitionné, euh, tu réalises ce qui, te manque le, ce qui manquait le mieux, en fait, c'est la santé. Ce qui manquait le plus, c'est la santé et de, de pouvoir compétitionner euh, au niveau où j'étais auparavant. 
équipe-là dans l'année d'un combat de championnat du monde, pour moi, c'est euh, quand même un miracle. Et puis, je suis vraiment content et euh, je suis très, très excité euh, au fait d'aller de, de me battre contre Carlos. And we'll take our next question from Stephen Morocho with MMAJunkie.com. Hey, Dan, we've recently learned that there's going to be, uh, that Anderson Silva is going to be present for the fight on uh, on the 17th. Uh, do you expect there to be some sort of in-cage call-out if uh, GSP is victorious? Well, there's no doubt that uh, Anderson Silva is showing, there, uh, showing up to cheer George St. Pierre on. You know, he wants him to win this fight, and uh, he wants he wants to fight him after, so... Uh, I would say yes. And, and George, uh, are you aware that uh, Anderson's going to be at the fight? And, and what are your thoughts on his presence there and uh, perhaps that super fight uh, if you indeed win? I don't, I don't care about Anderson Silva. He can do whatever he wants. He can go in Florida and play in Brazil if he wants. I'm, I'm focusing on Carlos Condit. That's all matters to me. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. And it is star one to be placed in the, into the queue. Star one. And we'll take our next question from Nicholas Cunningham with Hula America English and Spanish newspaper. Yeah, I have actually two quick questions, uh, one for Condit and one for GSP. My first question uh, for Carlos is, how's the response been from your Hispanic fan, and uh, what are your thoughts on the UFC having uh, an event potentially in Mexico in 2013? Um, you know, I, I, you know, I have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of fans in, in the Hispanic market, um, you know, and, you know, there, there is, uh, there is excited, um, you know, about, you know, about, you know, uh, you know the, the sport is, you know, I think anybody around the world, um, and I think it's, a, you know, it's, it's probably a, a great, uh, a great opportunity for UFC to be, you know, be moving into that market and, you know, possibly doing a fight in Mexico. Um, you know, there's a long history of, of, uh, you know, fight combat sports in, in that culture. And, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a great, uh, great transition. Right. Do you have any, uh, specific Hispanic organizations that you work with um, around your area? Specific Hispanic organizations? Uh, no, not really, no. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, and good luck on uh, Saturday. And my last question for GSP is, I know you and BJ Penn uh, had some great fights. How have the conversations been lately with uh, Rory McDonald about his fight coming up, and then how, how have you been able to help in training, and how has he helped you? Yeah, well, we help each other in training. We just actually we just finished training together. I was with him a few minutes ago. So training really hard to get ready, and it's fun because we, we fight and uh, pretty close so we can, uh, you know, we can get ready together at the same time. So it's good to have a training partner uh, getting ready at the same time. All right. Thank you very much, and good luck to you on Saturday as well. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll go next to Morgan Campbell with Toronto Star. Uh, perfect. Hey, thanks a lot for having me on, guys. I have a quick question for Dana and one for George. Uh, real, for, real quick, first, Dana, um, how important is it for the business uh, of the UFC to have – George St. Pierre back in action. You mentioned that he's uh, the biggest pay-per-view draw um, in the organization. Yeah, it's it's a big deal. <laughs> we missed him. It's good to have him back. Perfect. And George, uh, you know, there's there's been a lot of talk about again how you're the biggest pay-per-view draw, you know, in this organization. Um, but for you, do you ever feel any pressure, kind of, to 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 help carry this brand and to boost it? Well, I, you know, I have always pressure. That's one of the reasons everyone is calling me out for, for fighting. You know, they want to make money. They want to make the pay-per-view, you know. So uh, the importance for me is to take one fight at a time and focusing on the present moment. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm focusing on Carlos Candid. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. And we'll go next to Dave Deber with Post Media. Hi guys, uh, thanks for the time, uh, Carlos. Uh, you, it, it seems like this has happened with more than uh, more than one of your fights, but um, you know you're fighting GSP, but a uh, lot of talk, and most recently this week about uh, another potential opponent for him. Um, is it is it annoying? Um, is it uh, is it motivating? Um, you know how how do you how do you take all of that? 
Um, I would say that it's it's uh, definitely motivating. Um, I kind of I like playing the role of of the spoiler. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of people in the sport and in the media that I think are are overlooking me as, as an opponent for George and looking towards you know a super fight with Anderson maybe. Um, you know, I, I don't feel like George is overlooking me, but um, you know, I, I I'm excited to you know get in there, do my thing, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully change a lot of plans. Um, now, I guess, uh, I don't know if you can really do it, but, you know, uh, removing um, the, the fighter part of it, does, does the idea, um, you know, just, you're a fan of the sport, um, taking yourself out of the equation, does, you know, a, a, a George uh, Anderson fight as a fan intrigue you? Um. Yeah, I, I, I think so. You know, they're two two of the greatest fighters you know ever to step in the octagon, and you know, you always there's always that uh, um, interest in seeing you know who who, who really is the best. Um, but you know, uh, you know, for first things first, you know, George and I have to do our thing. Okay. All right. Uh, that's great. Thanks, Carlos. So we'll go next to Reed Forgrave with FoxSports.com. Um, yeah, just a couple of questions for Dana. Uh, Dana, what is it about GSP that makes him a, a bigger pay-per-view draw than even say Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't say enough good things about George St. Pierre. I say it all the time. The guy's, uh, uh, you know, he represents the belt well. He represents the sport well. He represents this company well. He represents Canada. I mean, he, I couldn't say enough good things about the guy. But the other thing, too, is the difference between George St. Pierre and every other guy that fights in the UFC is he's got an entire country behind him. Uh, you know, there's pay-per-view in Canada, too. And, and you know, I, I don't think that any other fighter has that. What, what does it mean to have that way? I mean, how much of a hit has that been for the UFC? For him to be gone, it's, I mean, it sucks. The guy fights three times a year, and he's the biggest pay-per-view draw in the company. And, uh, yeah, when he's gone for over a year, it's definitely not a good thing. Cool. Thanks. And we'll go next to Damon Martin with MMAWeekly.com. Uh, first question is for George. Uh, George, you know, you said recently that you've heard some of the criticism that people have made about you not finishing fights. How do you balance the criticism without changing your style that puts you in danger? It's not really, it's not really uh, be in danger. I believe it's. Uh, I need to be more opportunist, and I listen to the critics. You know, and and uh, I want to be, I want to be more opportunist and be a. Uh, Jumping more on opportunity when I find finish. That's that's why I've been working a lot on it. And if I'm part of the critic, are there to make me better? I don't take it only as a negative. Uh, think think it's a positive thing. Do you see moments when you look at your past fights, and a lot of it has come since the Matt Sarah, the first Matt Sarah fight? Do you look at your fights and see a big difference, and and criticize yourself when you look at some of those performances? Uh, yeah. You know, John Fitch was a. I'm very happy with John Fitch fight with uh, Jaguar the fight. Uh, maybe one fight I'm not happy, especially my last one with Jake Shelley. I look, I didn't look good. And I'm sure I could have done better, and I'm, I'm not happy when I finished that fight. I wasn't happy. DJ Penn, you know, I, I finished DJ Penn. He didn't came back for the fifth round. He would have given me five more minutes. I guarantee I would have finished you. I, I put him in the. I like to say in French, I, I put it put him in the red, you know, like he was gas, you know, he was like he was in the red, you know, he was almost done. So uh a lot of critics critics are bad, but a lot of critics are I believe that I think it's good for me to listen to it to make me a better fighter, but some are, you know, a little bit no matter how good you're gonna do, they're always gonna be people saying bad stuff about you. Stuff. And one question one question for Dana uh, Dana, I know we're talking a lot about, you know, if GSP wins uh, the Anderson Silva super fight, but can you give us a, a comment on the Martin Cam and Johnny Hendricks fight? What happens to the winner of that? Is that still up in the air? Could they get the next title shot? What's on the line there? Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. We've got to see how this thing plays out or whatever. I, you know, like I tell everybody, you know, people are asking me, you know, is the Anderson Silva fight happening after? I said, he's got, he's got to beat Carlos Condit first. And that fight's, you know, that that's – I think, like I said earlier, 
people are overlooking Carlos Condit, and that's that's a bad idea. Thanks very much, guys. All right. We'll take our next question from Dave Meltzer with WrestlingObserver.com. Uh, this is for, for Dana. Uh, theoretically, uh, I mean, if, if Carlos Condit wins the fight and looks very impressive in doing so, I mean, is there a chance of, of Carlos Condit and Anderson Silva in a fight, or is that something that you think he wouldn't be quite ready for this year? No, th- this fight, guys, understand, this fight between Anderson Silva and George St. Pierre is a pound-for-pound fight. These guys have both been number one and number two, either way you want to call them for the last however many years, and that's really what this fight is all about. Carlos Condit wins the fight, he'll defend the title against who's next. Okay, cool. Just one more And we'll go next to Jeremy Filosa with 98.5 FM Montreal. Uh, yes, this question is either for Dana White or Tom Wright. I don't know who, uh, who could answer this question, but... Um, from the information um, I was able to gather, the uh, tickets on the floor and the more expensive tickets in the seating area are at, are at $600. What I'm hearing is that the building is sold out, but those tickets are not selling. Uh, can you just, um, you know, I know GSP is very popular here in Montreal, but do you feel now that you've maybe pushed it a little bit too far with the price range? What do you intend on doing if those tickets don't sell? We're hearing people from Eventco are feeling that they'll need to fill those seats. I don't know if that means give them away or what, but uh, can you just talk about that, please? Well, we're still we're still a week and a half out, and you know I, I heard rumblings about this gate not doing well, George St. Pierre not selling out. The gate's over three million dollars. The gate's at like three point one million dollars right now. I wouldn't say that the gate sucks. The biggest gate you can do there is four million. Uh, what we did last time with George St. Pierre, and you know. Yeah, maybe we did. Maybe we did overprice this one a, a, a bit much, but times are tough out there, man. I don't know. We'll see what happens as we get closer to the uh, to the to the uh, event. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But the, the gate is, you know, one of the top gates of this year, three point one million dollars, and we'll see what happens over the next week and a half. But what would be your options? What are any options that you could look at? I guess I'll be calling your radio station looking for giveaways. How's that? Okay, sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> and we'll go next to Karen Bryant with MMA Heat. Yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, Nick's a ways away before getting licensed again. So, you know, he's got to get through the, the athletic commission first, get licensed, and who knows where we'll be by then. The landscape changes uh, so fast in the fight world. We'll see what happens when Nick's done with the commission, and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, it's a lot of guys that have been calling me out. Nick is definitely one of them. But the fight that I want the most is against the best man right now. It's Carlos Condit. That's the fight that I want. Uh, uh, excuse me. Um, we, we switched it up a little bit, um, definitely with um, the coaching, even because uh, Greg Jackson isn't uh, isn't involved. Um, so I had to bring in you know, several other people to kind of fill his shoes. Um, yeah, you know, we I, I did switch it up, and I, I wouldn't say that it's a huge departure from what we were doing before, but it is uh, um, just kind of, kind of add, adding and supplementing to what's been successful lately. And we'll go next to Rick Wright, the Albuquerque Journal. Uh, hi, one question for George and one for Carlos. Uh, George, I don't know if you've addressed this before or not, uh, but you've always trained at, at TriStar as well as Jackson's. Uh, you said that you and Greg are still close. Uh, but once this fight is, is over, regardless of the outcome, uh, would you come back to Jackson's at least part-time, or does the situation kind of cut that cord? No, 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 of course I will. Um, 
Greg, uh, I always train in Montreal, but most of the time Greg was coming in Montreal. And, uh, nothing had changed. And he stayed always uh, my plan and uh, very close to, to me. Just for this fight, the protocol, so no problem. Uh, Carlos, you, you talked about this just now, but uh, and you haven't been with, with Jack since your whole career, but how different has it been without Greg there? and, and Or is it the same kind of the crystal trail, among others, just, just knowing the drill so well? Um, it hasn't been a huge, um, hasn't been a huge change. Um, you know, I, I still, I still interact with Greg, you know, he's, he's still at the gym. So, um, you know, it's not like we're, you know, <laughs> not on speaking terms or anything like that. Um, but he, yeah, you know, the, the guys that I'm training with right now, uh, Chris Luttrell, uh, Mike Winklejohn and some, some of the other guys, you know, I, I, I've been training with them for a long time. Um, especially Chris Luttrell. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, I really feel like I'm in good hands, uh, you know, for, for the preparation. All right. Thanks guys. And as a reminder, that is star one for questions. That is star one to be placed into the queue. And we will go next to Mac Ingle with Fort Fort Worth Star Telegram. Uh, Dan, this question is for you. Uh, I bugged you about it the last time, and um, I'll continue to bug you about it. If, if you had a super fight potentially lined up between George and Anderson, is there any chance at all we could potentially see a fight at Cowboy Stadium? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, there, there's there, there's there's three great venues that you could do. Uh, you, you know, we could go to Toronto. Huge, uh, huge stadium there, Dallas, Texas Stadium, or you could do a soccer uh, stadium in Brazil. So th those are our three options. We'll see what we do. We'll see where it ends up. First, this fight has to, uh, this fight has to happen, people. I mean, it, it's fun to talk about this super fight, um, but I'm sure it's pissing Carlos off every time it's asked, and, and he's got to get through Carlos Conda first. Is there anything, Dana, that is preventing you guys from – I know you. When, you, when I asked you about this a few weeks ago, you said you wanted to hit a certain number to, to do Cowboy Stadium, and I'm assuming the same with Toronto and Brazil. Is there anything other than that hosting event that you think is that big uh, that's preventing you from, from doing a fight at Cowboy Stadium? Yeah, I, 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 if, if George St. Pierre versus Anderson Silva were to happen – that, that's a fight you could do at Cowboy Stadium. <clears throat> Have you had any discussions at all with those guys recently in the last few weeks about potentially doing something? Do you think that's just going to have to wait until the first of the year when you guys can start realistically scheduling things? There was some lady yelling in the background. I couldn't hear what you said. Say that again. <laughs> Have you had any have you had any discussions or dialogues with the Cowboys in the last few weeks? Are you just gonna wait for the first of the year? Oh no, we we we've been talking to them for a while. Yeah, we we we've been talking believe me, they're they're pumped and ready. Whenever we can bring a, an event there, they're ready for it. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. And we'll go next to Dave Deeper with Post Media. Hi, I just follow up with George. Um, with it being uh, so long since you have competed, are the uh, are, are the excited uh, butterflies in, uh, in in your stomach? You know, are, are they a little? Are there a few more uh, now that uh, now that it's getting closer? Uh, no, the, the, the thing that I, I see it as another fight, it's another opponent, you know, and a different problem. But what I realize the most is when I when you get hurt. Uh, and yeah, you cannot do that for a long time. You realize a little bit how you how you missed it. You know, it's a little bit like when you're in love with a, you know, with your girlfriend, for example. You know, and when you if you have a girlfriend, <laughs> you, you you when you're in, you're with her every day. You know, sometimes you don't realize you you love that that person. You know, but when you're away from a, for a long time, you realize you really you really love the, love that person because you missed missed it, missed it, missed her. But it's a, it's a little bit the same thing. Uh, then when someone is in love, you know, when you you do that every day, sometimes it gets so hard. Then the monotony, the monotony, and the the stress make you forget that you like that. But the the fact that I got hurt and I haven't done it for so long, and I had to I had to change my routine and everything to make uh, my life more efficient. 
now I, I'm I'm really pumped up. I'm very happy to be back, and I realize that I missed that a lot, and I really enjoy doing it. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks, George. And as a reminder, that is star one to be placed into the queue. Star one. And we'll take our next question from Victoria Belukova from Russian Chicago Magazine. Hello, guys. How are you today? My question is for George. Um, you've been out away from at Octagon for more than a year. Do you have any fears going into this fight uh, with Carlos Bundit in regards to any of the mention about? Yes, but I, I'm, I'm always afraid when I'm going to fight, regardless of whoever I'm fighting. Like, you know what? Even though I'm scared, November 17, I'm going to make that walk to the Octagon and I'm going to be fired up and compete fight the best that I can, and I'm going to live, it, live, it, live everything out there. That's something I can promise to everybody. And my other question as well to you, George, is um, what have you learned throughout this year that you've been away from Octagon about your friends, about your family, about your training partners, about the sport, about MMA? What did you get from that year? What did I get? For, what, did, what did I change? What did I get, you said? No, what have you learned? When you've been away from the fight, about your friends, about your training partners, did you learn? Oh, I, I, that? Yeah, I, I changed a lot of stuff in my life, in my personal life, of course. Uh, you know, a lot of things to make it easier and more efficient. And you know, one thing I can say, I'm I'm not burned out. I used to, and you know, people said to me, and I lost my smile. You know, I used to smile all the time when I'm doing press conference and stuff like that. I used to be more happy, more. And during the last few fights, I, lo I lost that fire. And it's true that I did it. But it happened, you know, s slowly, you know, so I, did, I didn't see it really happen. But now that I haven't, I haven't done this for a long time, I, I found it back. And now I can tell you, I spend time in the gym. And, you know, be when I'm at the end of my training camp, most of the time I'm like, oh, my God, I can't wait to be on vacation. And I can't wait to be done with this. But now I don't want to go on vacation. I want to enjoy every second of it. I want to live the present moment. I wanna, I'm going to get into that cage. Like I, when I fought in Toronto, I told the okay. I'm gonna. Be, I was like, wow, I can't, I, can't, I need to to leave the and I want to, I want to finish, you know. I want to leave there and and with the victory and get get rid of get rid of it, you know. But now I don't want to get rid of it. I want to enjoy every second of it. I want to, want to, you know, I want to, I want to have the experience and and you know have the chance to 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 live every every piece of second of it, you know. It's not like I'm I'm not burned out anymore. I'm, I'm happy to be back, and I think it's gonna be good for me. Thank you very much. Good luck to you both, guys. Thank you. And we'll go next to Nancy Audit with TBA Sports. Yes, I have three uh, questions. First, for uh, Carlos. Uh, Carlos, you said that George will have more pressure than you. What do you mean? Um. Well, you know, and I, I don't know. You know, this is just just an assumption. You know, when I fought in my hometown, um, you know, I felt a lot more pressure. Um, also, he's you know coming back off an injury. Um, you know, I, he, this, this is this is kind of a must-win fight for him, and I, I just feel like all the pressure's on him. You know, he he's he's the man. He's got the status. Um, you know, I, I I really have nothing to lose. I can just go in there, you know, perform to the best of my ability, you know, put on a good show, you know, put on an entertaining fight, and uh, you know, let's just fall, fall where they may. Es-tu d'accord avec ça, Georges, et comment, si oui, si tu es d'accord avec ça, que c'est toi qui vas avoir le plus de pression, comment tu vas gérer ça? Je vais le dire en anglais parce que je veux, je veux qu'ils comprennent ce que je veux dire. Ok, tu vas uh, rechercher à répondre uh, après en français. <laughs> ok, uh, I'm, I'm always, uh, you know, no matter, all my fights are big fights, I always have pressure, all my fights, you know, uh, whoever I'm fighting, whoever, what the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the promotion leading up to, to the fight, you know, if it, there is a bad blood or not, or if there is an injury that makes me away for a long time, it's always pressure because I always fight. All my last fight was been for world titles. It's always a big fight, you know. I'm used to fight uh, on big fight, and it's not the first time I fought home. I fought many times at home. So, yes, it's true. It's a lot of pressure on, on me, but I, I, I'm used to fight on that pressure, and I think I, I perform at my best when I feel like I'm, I, I'm, I'm over the edge. That's when I'm at my best. So I think it's a good thing for me. En français, s'il vous plaît, Georges? Uh, um, 
je, je performe beaucoup mieux quand je suis euh, quand je suis maintenant comme si je suis au bord du précipice. Et euh, c'est pas la première fois. Chaque combat que j'ai fait dernièrement, c'est des combats de championnat du monde. Donc, c'est des gros combats. Et je performe toujours mieux quand il euh, y a beaucoup de pression, il y a beaucoup d'enjeux euh, dans, dans, dans mes combats. Can we get your prediction, guys? Carlos first and George after, maybe Dana too. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk away with the UFC welterweight title, you know, undisputed, no more interim championship. Um, you know, I'm I'm gonna be the undisputed champion. Um, you know, on the, on November 18th. Hey, George, your Bye. prediction in French, please. <laughs> It's, it's, it's very similar. Je vais être champion du monde, uh, undisputed. Uh, je, vais, je vais battre Carlos Condit uh, et gagner, gagner la ceinture de championnat du monde, encore une fois. And Dana? Dana's actually left the call to attend to a meeting, so we will save that question for Fight Week in Montreal. <laughs> okay. And we'll go next to Jeffrey Harris with 411mania.com MMA. Uh, thank you for having us on the call today. Uh, first question uh, for uh, GSP. Uh, on UFC tonight, you talked about uh, wanting to enjoy getting into the octagon again and not with the thought of uh, getting out. Did you have that feeling at all in, in any of your recent fights, perhaps against uh, Jake Shields or any of your more recent opponents before this fight? No, I didn't really have that feeling. I, I, I lost. It's like, I, it's like I, I like what I do, but I fuck up that I like it. The monotony and, and I haven't done it for a long time and a lot of stuff was happening in my life and, and I feel like uh, I lost a little bit of the fire, you know. And now I'm I'm glad to be back. I realize that I love that and you know, it's important. If you don't have fun doing what you're doing is just don't do it, you know? Because I I'm good at what I do because I have fun. And when you don't have fun you 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 not you become not as good. So I, I have fun at what I do and I want to enjoy every second of it. So it's it's a, it's the best job in the world. We we have we're lucky we're blessed we're we're you know we're world class athlete fighting in front of a lot of people you know and we get paid for it at the highest level it, it's a great opportunity and we're very happy to be to do that and I'm very uh, I'm still very uh, glad to do to do this. Now uh, for Carlos Condit, um, you talked about being the hungrier fighter for this fight. Um, is that really going to make the difference here, though? You know, we talked we heard a. Uh, John Fitch, when he fought GSP, he said he had nothing to lose for that fight. And, um, you know, GSP, just no one's been able to beat him. No one's had been able to deal with, uh, you know, his wrestling, his quickness. Why do you think you're going to be able to deal with that um, at UFC 154? Um, well, uh, you know, I feel like uh, I have a, you know, a, a skill set um, and I pose some problems for, you know, a lot of opponents, not just George. Um, that, that they don't get from from different guys. Um, you know, I, I'm well rounded. I'm able to you know take take the fight to my opponent no matter where the fight ends up. Um, and then you know I'm I'm mentally strong. Um, you know I you know and, and not saying that that George's other opponents haven't been. Um, but you know I uh, we're just gonna have to see how it goes. But um, you know I, I I'm 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 very confident and. Uh, You know, I know George is one of the best, uh, one of the best fighters that's ever stepped in the octagon, and you know, it's, it's an honor to compete against him. Um, but you know, I, I really feel ready. I feel like I'm, a, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm as I'm as ready as I've ever been, and uh, I'm excited to go out there and uh, you know do my thing. Thank you very much. This does conclude today's question and answer session. At this time, I would like to turn the call back to Mr. Schuller. Thanks, Candace, and thanks to GSP, Dana, and Condit as well. A couple of quick updates here that have come into us since the call began. We'll now have three hours of prelim coverage in Canada on Sportsnet and TVA Sports. That'll be from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern on Fight Night. So that's three hours of coverage for our fans up in Canada. In addition to that, we have a busy week of events in Montreal leading up to UFC 154. The UFC will be hosting all of its Fight Week events at the same venue. That venue is New City Gas, G-A-S. It's located at 950 Ottawa Street in Montreal. And the schedule of events for next week is big, and I'll run through them now. All times are Eastern. Wednesday, November 5th, uh, 14th, we'll have a press conference with GSP and Condit at 1 p.m. 
On Thursday, November 15th, we'll have the open workouts for media for 12 to 3 p.m. And then on Friday, November 16th, UFC on Fox Star, Rory McDonald is going to be doing the Fight Club Q&A at 2 p.m., and then that will be followed by the weigh-ins at 4 p.m. Fuel TV will have full coverage from the weigh-ins beginning at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Just a quick reminder, the Ultimate Fighter this Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, immediately followed by UFC Primetime at 11 on FX. And tomorrow we will have a media conference call with the Ultimate Fighter Brazil 2 coaches, heavyweights Minotauro Nogueira and Fabricio Verdum. That call will take place again tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Before we wrap up, I'm going to turn things over to Tom Wright for closing remarks. Thanks, everybody, for taking the time to uh, get on this call today. Uh, uh, UFC 154 um, next Saturday, November the 17th. Uh, we're really excited about it. It's the 11th time we've been in Canada, third time this year. And, uh, you know, it's the fifth time we've come to Montreal outside of Las Vegas. Um, there aren't that many cities that uh, can match Montreal. And there's, there's 10 Canadians on this card. Um, we're super excited about, obviously, the, uh, the main event for the undisputed uh, welterweight championship of the world. But um, you know, there's going to be a whole bunch of other great fights um, on Saturday night, uh, November the, uh, the 17th. So thanks, everybody, for uh, getting on the call today. Look forward to seeing people um, in Montreal next week. And uh, uh, once again, uh, thanks for everything. This does conclude today's conference. Thank you for your participation.